All right, y'all. Today, I want to talk about scalping in choppy markets. This is a trading strategy that has a very, very high win rate. So if you were into that, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you appreciate technical analysis, type of content, trading strategies, and things like that. So before we get more into it, I need to say that this strategy is not meant for beginners. This strategy is meant for somebody who has a handle on trading already because we're dealing with small movements in the market, we're dealing with short-term volatility, and we're taking advantage of that. Also, this strategy is meant for using higher leverage. You're gonna notice a lot of these trades that I've taken, the percentages are very, very high. I'm using 60X leverage, I'm using 50X leverage. Even one trade I took today, I was using 75X leverage. This is not irresponsible leveraging. Let me make that very clear. What we are doing is we are using leverage in order to take a very small amount of money, risk a very small amount of money in order to potentially make a large amount of money. It's about risk management. It's about managing your risk to reward ratio. So I need to get these things out of the way. Now let's get into it. I want to show you the strategy that I used to, in the past few days, take a long from right here, take a short from right here, take a short from right here. And then also I was able to take a long from right here take it long from right here and currently in a little long from right down here and a few more and what's great about this strategy is it's not the kind of strategy where you are going to be stressed out all the time this is the type of strategy where you always have a very clearly thought out plan in advance in fact all of these trade setups that I've taken I have given the setup for in advance in my VIP discord for example the first long trade that I took over here from about 41,860, I gave the trade setup in advance on Friday. And then over the weekend, we can see we came down right to the level and got a bounce right from there, posted it in the VIP Discord. And so then the next short that I took right up here, again, that was a short that I did post in advance over here in the VIP Discord. I posted two of them, one from the golden pocket, which we did take, and the second one from this naked point of control slash value area high, which we did take. We can see if we go to a smaller term time frame, there were actually two shorts to be taken right here. The first one from right here that we shorted down, and then the second one from right here, which I am currently still in. And again, like I said, these are scalps. These are taking advantages of very small volatility in the market. So we're talking 2% moves, sometimes just a 1% move, guys. Okay, now I'm going to go through the steps on how I am able to take these trades. By the way, if you do want to get into the VIP Discord, where I post these setups in advance, as well as daily technical analysis updates, we post scalps, we post swing trades, like this juicy uh, Bitcoin long that we just took yesterday, from right here, literally right this move right here, posted it in advance, stuff like that. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper. We also have a thriving community of traders in here all posting their great technical analysis, trade setups, and really cool things in here. Shout out to White Phoenix, shout out to KPAC, shout out to Boyan, shout out to Dr. Harlekin. Uh, shout out to the Toast Father. We have a, a lot of really good traders in here. Patreon.com forward slash Jason Gasper. It's a great environment for learning. So let's get into the actual strategy. This is the strategy, guys. These are the steps, the order of operation. Step number one you are going to identify a key level. A lot of people, when they approach scalping, they are not identifying key levels. Now, the problem with doing that and trying to enter a trade without identifying a key level is when we're dealing with small time frames, a lot of times the signals are not going to be very reliable, right? If we're using an indicator like Market Cipher, which I do use, just because we have an anchor wave and a trigger wave, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get a good move. Right, for example, right here, we have an anchor wave and a trigger wave, even a bullish divergence. But what happens? We come up a little bit and then a dump, right? The pump doesn't happen until later, right? The pump does not happen until later. This is very important. So what we need to do is we need to be able to identify key levels on a chart, right? Key levels on a chart. And what this will do is this will allow us to have a point of reference from which we are able to look for trades. For example, the first short that I took in this a little, well, actually the first long that I took here was actually simply just a trend line. It was just a trend line. If we take a look at the price action that we were trading from a while ago, 
Um, pretty sure from... Well, it doesn't really matter. The point is, I had a level marked out. And then if we take a look at the shorts that I was taking, let's take a look at that first short that I took from right here. This was simply just the golden pocket retracement from the high to the low, okay? So we had a key level from which we were looking to short. The second short that I was looking to take, it was a value area high, and it was a naked point of control. This level right down here, from this long trade that I took right here, this was a chickens drinking water level. This is actually a trade that I gave during my live VIP Bitcoin stream. I gave the setup live during the stream because we saw the setup, we saw our confirmations at that level, chickens drinking water level, during the stream. And we took the trade and it was a massive pump as you can see. And so my point is you have to have a key level marked on the chart before you can look to take scalps because the levels are going to be the reference point from which we interpret everything else. And the one thing I want you guys to remember when we're looking at this strategy is this. When it comes to scalping, we need to be able to identify highs and lows, reference points from which we are able to take trades. The old adage of buy low, sell high, this is very, very important because if we don't buy low and sell high, we're going to get chopped up. So we need to find these levels and these levels are going to identify high and low for us, okay? If, for example, we have a golden pocket retracement right here and we also see that this golden pocket retracement happens to be at a value area low for the range that we are trading in, we have a very clearly defined low. And so when we come down to here, we can look for trades off of this low. If we have a high volume note, right, we can look for longs off of this low. If we have a golden pocket retracement, we can look for shorts off of that high. We need to have this framework and we need to be in the mindset that when price is pumping in a sideways low in, in, in a sideways market context, right? Because because we're scalping. This is the 12 minute time frame. But if we go to the 12 hour time frame, right? We're, we've literally been trading this tiny little nothing right here. Like for the past few days, this looks like nothing on a 12 hour time frame. And so we need to have very very clear highs and lows on a short term time frame. Okay. I cannot stress this enough. You need to learn how to identify levels before you can use this strategy. And if this is something you don't know and you want to know. Check out jasoncaspertrading.com. This course will give you the knowledge and the skills you need to become a confident, profitable trader. You'll learn how to read the charts and feel confident in your trades. But not only that, you'll learn how to read the charts and feel confident in your trades. Learn how to stop trading without emotion. We teach you five strategies that have been tested and are profitable. And most importantly, risk management and mindset, right? How to maximize your profits, minimize your losses. You can check out the testimonials. This is meant for people who are complete beginners or even intermediate traders. There's currently a 40% coupon. There might still be some left. Capital L, capital O, capital V, capital E. Love in all capital letters can get you 40% off for a limited time in honor of getting 76,000 subscribers. Okay, check that out. It's a pretty sweet deal. Um, yeah, so you need to identify levels first. Okay, now once price comes to your... Okay, and not only do you identify your level, but you have to make a covenant with yourself. And you have to say, self... I am not going to even think about entering a trade unless price comes to one of my levels, okay? Unless price comes to one of my levels, I am not even going to entertain entering a trade. That is step number one. If you can just tell yourself that you are not going to enter a trade unless price is at a level of support or resistance, right off the bat, you are going to have a lot of success um, that, you, that you did not have before, right? Because look at this, we have a level we don't take a trade until we come to the level when we come to the level boom that's where we get a reaction again we don't long until we come to a level we came to our level we get a reaction we don't long until we come to our level again we come to our level we get a reaction we don't long until we come to our level again we come to our level we get a reaction we don't long until we come to our level again we come to our level we get a reaction of course there's other things we're looking for here but the key, the point is we need to identify these levels now after we've identified the level and we've decided we're not going to enter a trade until we get to that level we are going to look at the higher time frames, the one to four hour time frame, to determine if price is actually going to get a reversal at that point. Now, I want to make something very clear. 
when price gets to a level, we already need to have a bias because at the end of the day, trading involves taking a risk. There's not a 100% guarantee that you are going to win the trade. You have to take a chance. You have to take a risk. The purpose of these steps is to load the dice in our favor so that instead of it being a 50-50 shot, maybe it's a 70-30 shot, maybe it's an 80-20 shot that the trade is going to go in our favor. So when price comes to a level of resistance, I am immediately biased looking for a short trade. And when price comes to a level of support, I am immediately biased looking for a long trade. So we need to have our biases peaked, our spidey bias senses are tingling when price gets to one of these levels okay and when it's at the level then we are going to use our indicators to determine if it's a good idea to enter a trade or not so i like to start by looking at the one to four hour time frame and i'm going to be looking for these things do we have anchor waves or do we have trigger waves forming now the indicator i use to trade is called market cipher primarily i use market cipher b I also sometimes use market cipher A, market cipher SR, Mar market cipher DBSI. But when it comes to scalping on lower time frames, I'm primarily using market cipher B. And when price is coming to one of my levels, I love to look at the one hour to the four hour and I ask myself this question Does it look like we are printing a top or a bottom? Now, let's go back in time and look at what it looked like when I took this short right here okay now first of all remember this is a level i had marked in advance right we go to the vip discord we go to the potential scalp trade channel here and i had this exact level marked on my chart with already knowing in my head if price comes to here i'm looking for a short okay i'm looking for a short if i get my confirmations right so we come up to the level and what what do i see at the chart at that time i'm gonna go back in time i'm gonna take a look at the chart all right at that time, we can see the one hour market cipher B is looking like it is about to print a top, right? It looks like it could print a top at any time. It's not printing a top, but it looks like it could print a top. All right, this is very important. We go to the two hour, what do we see? The two hour looking like it could print a top, right? We see the VWAP is curving down. We see the momentum wave is about to curve over. And not only that, but this is very important too. When you're using Market Cipher B, there are things called anchor waves and trigger waves. And to simplify this, an anchor wave is a big wave that prints over the 60 line, which is the white line right here, or underneath the negative 60 line, which is the white line down here. And if you have a big anchor wave, the next wave that prints is called a trigger wave. And those trigger waves tend to be very, very powerful. So if I see that there's a potential trigger wave forming as price is coming to my level of resistance, I'm going to be very interested in taking a short there. And then what I do is I go from the higher time frames, the one to four hour, and I'll go down to maybe the 24 minute. And I ask myself, what do I see here on the 24 minute? Well, on the 24 minute, it becomes undeniably clear that we are printing a red trigger wave very, very soon, okay? It's either printing right now or it's about to print. And not only that, we can see that the momentum is coming down. Now, I want to show you something else that I'm looking at on these higher time frames, which is this, the money flow on Market Cypher B. If we turn off the light blue and the dark blue waves, we turn off the VWAP and the big green dots, sorry, big boy, and the small dots. If we turn off the RSIs, we can see something very clear here, which is as price is now moving here and we put in our high and now we're coming up, putting in a lower high, we can just draw a trend line over the money flow and notice money flow is coming down which means there's a very good chance that we are still going to come down here because money is leaving the asset. This is a very powerful indicator on market cipher. And so if I see that the two hour is about to print a red trigger wave, the one hour is about to print a red trigger wave, the 24 minute is about to print a red trigger wave, money flow is coming down, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move over to the lower time frames. okay? Now, it's very important that we interpret the lower time frames through the bias that we already have from knowing that we're at a level and looking at these higher time frames we are building a case that is what we're doing here we're building a case we're using evidence to make a decision do we enter the trade or not whatever the evidence points to that's the decision that we have to make that's the decision that we have to, to that we have to stick to but we have to go through the proper order of operations because if we do it in any other order it's not going to work so then we're going to look at the lower term time frames okay i'm going to go ahead and put back everything on on good old market cipher bizzle turn on the waves turn on the wap the dots all this stuff right 
the RSIs even, because those are important. And then we go down to, I like to use the 12 minute down to the one minute. Now on the 12 minute, what I like to look for is I like to look for bearish divergences. Bearish divergences are where momentum is getting lower over time while price is getting higher over time. This is telling us there is an imbalance. I'd like to look at the momentum waves diverging. I also like to look at the money flow diverging. If you draw a trend line over the money flow humps, you can see that the money flow humps are also getting lower as the price is getting higher into our area of resistance. For me, this would have been an immediate short trade entrance. And indeed, this was. And indeed, I used very high leverage because these are very strong indicators showing that we are going to get a move down here, right? These are the type of trades where I will use very, very high leverage because here's the thing. Number one, we're scalping. Number two, remember, I'm using leverage in order to leverage a small amount of my trading capital to a very high amount, okay? If I am put, if I, if I have a, a whole account of, let's say I have an account of $100,000, okay? Let's say I only want to risk 1%. I'm only risking losing $1,000, okay? I'm only risking losing $1,000. Now, if I'm using 60x leverage, 62x leverage, that means I can risk $1,000, but I can put $62,000 on the trade. If the trade gets liquidated, my loss is only 1% of my total trading capital. But if the trade is successful, now I am making a 62 times the percent on my $1,000. Okay, so if I did put 100, um, $62,000 on, uh, $1,000 on a trade, now I'm making 266% on that trade, right? This is why I'm using high leverage. It's not because I'm being irresponsible, it's because I'm being responsible. And I'm telling myself because this is such a small time frame, and because I have very clear confirmations that this level is the level we are going to reject from. If I get liquidated here and I'm wrong in my analysis, no big deal, I lose a very small amount of capital, but if I'm right, I can make a big amount on my capital. This is part of risk management. We do go over this in the course in, in great detail. If you're confused, check out the course. There's still a 40% discount here. Um, if you use LOVE, all capitals, okay? Now, if the 12 minute time frame is not giving bearish divergences, then I will go down to the six minute time frame and look for bearish divergences here as well. Um, and if there's not in the six minute, I will even look at the three minute and potentially even the one minute. And a lot of times what I do is I will look at the time frames together, the 12 to the one minute, and basically we are going to determine is there more bearishness or more bullishness? And this is something that does take a little bit more experience. And there's a few other things I'd like to look at on Market Cipher B. The money flow I went over, the momentum I, I went over, we're looking to see divergences, but the RSIs are also a very good indicator of where price is going to go. If we see that the RSIs are together like this and they look like one, see there's two RSIs here. If we see the RSIs look like one RSI and we have all our other confirmations, that to me is the icing on the cake that we're going to get a big move. When the RSIs are together, um, let's see if I can find, yeah, like right down here, we can see they are together. And boom, we get the move to the upside. Right here, we see they are together. Boom, we get the move to the downside. Uh, again, right here, we see that they are together. We do get a little move to the downside, but again, we have to have all the confluences together. So if the RSIs are together, that is just one more added confluence that we are going to get a move, okay? So that is the short trade that I wanna go over. Let's go over a long trade um, that I took also. Um, I, we don't have time to go through all of them, but I will go through one more. Let's um, go to the potential scalp trade channel here, and let's take a look at this uh, scalp trade. Man, I post a lot of trades in here, guys. Okay, so yeah, so this one right here, okay? Um, I posted it actually a while ago, right? But as time went on, I, I refined, this is the original setup that I posted. I wanted to take a scalp off the golden pocket at 41,440, 41,285 to 41,440. Okay. And so that golden pocket was right here. And you can see, uh, actually, is that that golden pocket? No, hang on. Let me see. Is this golden pocket? Um, 
a second. Now I'm flopping and groping. So we did take this long off this golden pocket here. And then, okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. Then we got this low uh, to this high. Wait a second. Guys, I really am flopping and groping right here because I am lost in the price action. Totally lost in the price action. Where was the trade that we took yesterday? This is the one hour time frame. This is the 10th of January. Okay, okay, okay. Now I see. Now I see. that let me pull the golden pocket from here to here and um, wait a second pull it from here to here wait a second wait a second guys I'm, I'm <laughs> what, the, what the heck is going on okay so I I had this golden pocket um, It always happens when you're trying to make a video, right? So, yeah, this this is this is the golden pocket right here. We had it pulled. I'm I'm assuming it was from the low that we put in to that high, and I'm not sure why it's not working now. So let me try this one more time, and if not, then I won't be able to do this video. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to do it. Because uh, I can't find the golden pocket. Am I on log scale? What the heck? Yeah, yeah that's weird. Oh, pff. I'm sorry, guys. I'm on replay mode. I'm on replay mode. See, this is why this is not financial advice. This is why you should never, ever, 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 ever take financial advice from a guy who forgets he's <laughs> who forgets he's on replay mode. Okay, so from that time <laughs> that we put in this low to this high, now I am looking to take a long from this golden pocket. And indeed, we did take a long from that golden pocket. You can see that I gave the setup twice, right? I gave it once when we were um, back here. And then when we came down there, I gave it again because there was another stipulation where we could come a little bit lower to get another bounce. So again, we're long from this golden pocket. Let's take a look at what we saw as we came down to the golden pocket. So number one, step number one, is we are identifying the level on the chart by the way guys i am not a real trader i only trade paper trading fake money the reason i only trade fake money is because i um there's risks involved trading real money and the goal of life that purpose of life is to actually avoid all risks at all costs and if you don't believe me turn on the tv and watch any news station and you will realize that the purpose and the goal of humanity is to avoid every single risk you never want to put yourself in a position where you could get your feelings hurt you never want to put yourself in a position where you could lose anything okay and so i'm just a paper trader this is not financial advice i do not advocate real trading in any way shape or form so we've identified our key level the golden pocket now we're going to look at the one to four hour time frame let's go ahead and turn on our indicator good old market cipher b and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what we saw on the one hour time frame as we came down to our golden pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. What do we see here on the one hour time frame? We see that it looks like we are about to form a bottom. Not only are we about to form a bottom, we can go back in time again. And this time I'll have to remember that I am on replay mode, but we are also getting a bullish divergence on the one hour. If you see that we're getting a divergence on the high time frames like the one hour, right away we're already biased because we're out of support to long now i'm super biased to take a long because the one hour is giving me a bullish divergence which means i'm getting an anchor wave and a trigger wave right anchor wave here trigger wave here but the price is not moving up with the trigger wave the price continues to get lower as momentum comes higher that is a bullish divergence then we go down to the 12 minute time frame actually i'd like to go to the 24 first we can see on the 24 minute time frame, same thing as we're coming down to our golden pocket, we're getting bullish divergences, okay? Then we go down to the 12 minute time frame. What do we see? We see bullish divergences. And not only that, again, guys, if we take a look at our money flow on market cipher B, 
we can see that <laughs> I can't believe I forgot I was on replay mode. That's so funny. We can see that we indeed are seeing the money flow coming up over time, right? As the price is getting lower, right to our golden pocket, we can see the money flow coming up over time. So now we're super, super biased based on being at support, looking at the higher time frames, and then um, looking at the lower time frames to enter into the trade. And if we go down even to the lower time frames, like maybe the six minute, we can really see the money flow coming up here. And if we turn back on all our indicators on market cipher B, the VWAP, the buy, the blue waves, all this stuff, even the RSIs, we can see that we really do have all our indicators right here. Okay, we are literally, as we're coming down to this golden pocket, we can see multiple divergences happening as we're coming down to the support, divergence after divergence, money flow coming up very, very locally. We can even kind of see the RSIs not looking as great as we'd want them, but still looking pretty good. And here's the thing, even if we had entered this trade early, let's say we had entered the trade early, right over here when we first tapped that 618, even if we're using 70x leverage or 50x leverage, we would not have gotten stopped out. We would not have gotten liquidated. We would not have gotten liquidated on this trade. Okay, I just want to point that out. I have entered trades with 50x, 70x leverage, and there can be some volatility and you will not get liquidated. Of course, I said this for advanced paper traders only because you really have to know what you're doing. And if you don't, check out the course. If you're interested, if you want further learning, you can join the VIP Discord where we have a great community. It's a great environment. But this is what we were looking for. Now, the, the last few steps are going to be this. Make a decision and stick to your decision. I talk to so many people who, when they enter the trade, they freak out. They use a tight stop loss and they get stopped out and then price does what, what they wanted it to do anyway. Which we have to understand if we have already made the decision and we're super biased, right? We need to stick to our decision. If we are using good risk management, then we need to give ourselves enough of a, of a room where our stop loss is not going to stop us out before price moves in our favor. We have to give the trade some breathing room. The way I like to do that is by using high leverage and using a very uh, small percentage of my trading capital. The way other people do it is they use very low leverage and they use a high amount of their trading capital, but they make sure their stop loss is in a place where they're not going to lose more than let's say one to 5% of their total trading capital. Okay, that's very important when it comes to scalping is risk management. For me, scalping high leverage helps me save money because I, it takes a lot of the negative psychology away. If you are using low leverage, you do not have a very clear invalidation point, meaning price can keep going down. And you could keep lying to yourself saying, yeah, it's going to go back up. It's going to go back up. It's going to go back up. It never goes back up. Next thing you know, you just lost 10% of your trading account. If you're only risking 0.5 to 2% of your capital using high leverage, let's say your liquidation price, let's say you're longing right here, which I did. I longed right here. Your liquidation price is way down here, probably. Um, and then you could put your stop loss like right here. So worst case scenario, you're losing 1% of your total money. Your trade has plenty of breathing room. And then you're, because remember, we're not entering blindly. We have all these factors that are loading the dice in our favor. And so if we take a loss, no big deal. We go on to the next trade using good risk management. We will be profitable over time because we're sticking to the strategy. But I see people who like will enter a long trade uh, like, They'll like get in right here as soon as we touch the level, super tight stop loss, and then they get wicked out and then they're like, oh, boom, they, they miss out, right? So you have to stick to your decision. Trading is a risk, right? We have to be comfortable with taking the risk. And then step number five is using good risk management. Like I was kind of talking about guys, if you want more info on risk management, make sure to check out the, um, the course guys. And also it's kind of funny because today, we actually did take a scalp trade in here and um, it was a scary one guys it was a scary one so I gave the setup and um, basically uh, <laughs> I gave the setup I was looking for my di divergences here on like the six minute on these lower time frames coming down to this golden pocket right so we did we came down to the golden pocket if we pull it from um, down here to up here we came right down to the golden pocket and this is where I entered the trade and you can see guys, as soon as we enter the trade, in a very short period of time, we immediately get this bounce up here 
and reject off the golden pocket. And, you know, it was a very scary trade in the sense that for the longest time, because I did enter the trade right here. So I was in drawdown for a while, okay? We're coming down, leading slowly. And basically we were in the VIP Discord and we all decided to play the Rocky theme song, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. And whenever everybody in the Discord plays the Rocky theme song, we get a pump, right? And so that's exactly what happened. We played the Rocky theme song and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, we get this 0.5% pump, just enough to take take profit one. And then of course we played the Rocky theme song again after we came down and we found support on this local golden pocket right here. Golden pockets are so amazing guys uh, because they are really, really respected. So look at what happened, right? We came down, we got our entry and uh, we came up immediately, rejected off of this golden pocket right here, this Fibonacci golden pocket, boom, reject. Then we come down, we bounce off of this golden pocket. Both times the Rocky theme song, when everyone in the Discord played it at the same time, we get these pumps. And uh, that trade, you know, it, it turned out pretty well, right? It actually turned out pretty dang well. Um, I think it, it was, it ended up with 75x leverage being like a 40% gain. So I'm satisfied with it. I'm satisfied. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm still actually in that scalp long from right down in here. I'm still in it. I'm hoping we get more of a pump here. I don't know what's going to happen. So maybe if we all play the Rocky theme song, I'm not going to get stopped out at my entry, right? I've got my stop loss at the entry. We'll see what happens. I'm, I almost got stopped out twice, but we will see what happens, guys. Make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you found this helpful. Make sure to share this on all your social media platforms. I'm talking about MySpace. I'm talking about Zanga. I'm talking about whatever the kids are into, Tic Tacs and Breath Mints and Twitters, Twatters, and all that stuff. So God bless everybody. In the name of Jesus the Messiah. Happy paper trading, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.